Hey, what's up, man? We're back. It's first smoke of the day. It's your boy Pack in the building. I'm here with my co-host Blackleaf. What up? And today we got a super, super special guest in the building. The dopest, dopest Yola. What's Thank good, you for homie? Having me, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming through, man. For of real. Of course. I've been sitting here talking for a minute, so. It's yeah, we a have. More. You know, it's funny. It's you start talking before episode, and then it goes live, and then you're like, I you don't know what the fuck time. to say. Every single time, we do half an hour before we'll talk about shit. Like, fuck, press play. We gotta oh, we'll get say, it running. Don't, no one talk. No, stop talking. And then we have to wait for the, the cameras to come on because it's like we'll start to talk about everything we want to talk about yep. before the episode. I'll knock out questions that I have before <laughs> I even start. Feel dumb right away. Yeah, like, all right, I know shit. everything. We're good. Yeah, I do the same shit, dude. Thanks for coming through today. Yeah, and like, man, course. you've had a hell of a journey, hell of a career. I feel like you paved a lane. Mm -hmm. And you. um, you know, we uh, we were just speaking earlier. Like, we we feel like the first time we met you was at Kush Talk. What was that like? 2015, 2016? Yeah, had to have been at least fifteen or right sixteen, fifteen yeah. probably. Yeah, and uh, sure. you're, you had the the push trees. Mm -hmm whole setup going crushing it still and you've just been yeah you've just been going ever since bro you haven't yeah. let up at all yeah no for so sure. it's been it's been inspiring to see and Thanks, like man. everything you got going is uh like i said you're paving your own lane for real like i would say like the original one of the originals for sure Thank no you. doubt okay yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. absolutely it's, it's crazy because pack gods even has like a personal story where he saw his dope as yola shirt you want to tell it's like it's a cool I it's a such shirt. What happened? Where you even were, you were in Colombia, and one of the guys was wearing a dope as Yola shirt. Oh, yeah. Bro. Oh, yeah. I was, I was we touched to about that, before. but yeah. it's just so, it, your brand touches anybody who smokes. It's not just yes. USA. It's not just California. It's literally a global brand, which is one of the hardest things to do. Yeah, anybody that smokes weed, man, I got a lot of pictures. But like, check out my weed from Brazil, Colombia. I'm like, damn. They're like, it's not the greatest, but it's what we're smoking. I'm like, fuck yeah. Because I, you know, I answer DMs, I answer all the comments as much as I can. So, like I was saying earlier, I talked to some people for years, and there's a hell of people in Colombia, and we have a South Africa following for some reason, <laughs> like a big one for some, and then UK. It's some of the craziest places. The culture is way stronger than what you would think. That story was crazy because we were like, I went in a smoke shop. Was like trying to meet someone. Oh, he was wearing it. Yeah, the guy, yeah, the guy like, that yeah. owns a smoke shop. Push I know trees. exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, he has <laughs> Ross four twenty something something on Instagram. He's from Maybe. Columbia. Yeah, he rocks all our shit. Rolls cool joints on my trays. I know exactly he, you're talking about. He he ended up uh, if it's the same. He ended up um, being like, I want you to meet the owner of the shop. They're at another shop. Let's go over there. Um, it was funny because like at first he was feeling this? feeling me out and being like, you know, who are you? And I was like, look, I, we own a, a brand called Blackleaf. It's out of LA. I showed him the Instagram. He shows me his Instagram. He's like, I'm already following you guys. Oh, And it was like, we just hit it off. Next thing you know, I'm getting like some shark tooth bud from a guy that that's down there from Humboldt that like lives down there now. Hooked what? me up with him. And pretty crazy. Yeah. I was like, but yo, the this guy's is wearing, it was dank too. I was like, wow. And it's like wearing this yeah. shirt. I know yeah. you're talking crazy. About. Yeah. Hey, he's and a skinnier, we, light skinned like kid. I know you're talking about That's like, so cool. He's not he's taller than me. Yeah. I see the pictures of him. I know exactly who he looks like. He smokes a lot of joints. And then we went to the other smoke shop and they're there like dabbing. They got they got at the time it was like at the time it was like um carts were hitting real real big. They had every cart. They had everything. I was just like, holy shit, this is a lot bigger than what I ever imagined it to be. That's you know, it was real culture. And like they knew, they knew what was good. You know, at the time, I think it was like Moxie was big. Like oh, that's certain, like twenty seventeen. You know what I mean? Certain things were big, and they were like just talking about all the the latest and greatest shit. And like then they had some of it. It was crazy for sure. It's crazy because you're in the industry, and then you go out. Isn't it wild? I I know you guys know. Here's an eighth, and people, you don't want me to pay for this? Are you sure? Because that's gonna last for a month. They're like, this guy just gave me a month's worth of weed for nothing. Mm -hmm. And you see people's faces light up. It's weird when people aren't in the industry and they see some shit like, you never seen a pound? Oh, that's right. You, you're a lawyer. This is a pound of weed. Like my cousin, the first time he goes, well, how much is that? Go, oh, yeah, you didn't grow up with me. That's right. This is a pound of weed. It's just like a whole different thing. So over there, like, dab it? Wow. So they're like the, <laughs> the underground culture still crazy. My tolerance is so low at the time, too. So oh, I, left, I was like. Like we found it. I, I would, and I'd have to say that like anytime I see this design, bro, I see it all over the place. I think of you, the tree with the guy pushing against it. 
that is synonymous with your brand. That is such a great logo. Thanks, and I see it all over. I, and I feel like now I see it more now that I've like, the more I recognize it, the more I'm like, Oh, there it is again. Nope. Oh, I was like, you guys, that's like an all time big seller. When I for see you. it in public. It's like, yeah. I, I get crazy. Like, <laughs> dude, someone's wearing my fucking shirt. I've only seen it like 50 times, but like, that's you know, in public, that's good. you know, being seen it in yeah. public is crazy. And not out of cannabis. That's cup. the payoff, really. Like People don't realize that. It's like, it's not me, money. Fuck you. Because I drove by, nice shirt. Fuck you. It's like, damn, I made that he shit. He knows you. Shit, he doesn't know. He doesn't know scream. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was getting heckled. Yeah, he, did. he had the shirt and the hat. So I was like, yo, nice shirt. Fuck you. It's like, damn. <laughs> I just kept driving. <laughs> Welcome to the weed industry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, also, no, like, yo, no. you smoke weed? You sure? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Someone just gave you a compliment. compliment. Fuck you. Man. So it was funny. God. So, I mean, going into that, the, the brand, bro, and building your name, where does it all start? Um, In Merced. Okay. Merced, California is super ghetto as fuck. That's where I'm from. It's whack. But, it, like, you know, it's hometown. So it's, it's comforting. Uh, it's it's good. Hometown. You know when you go like, oh, fuck. Yeah. That's Merced. Which Merced's great. But it sucks too, right? So I was selling mad packs out there. That's all I was doing my whole life. Like, sir, like a lot of us, right? And then um, I was delivering pizza and selling weed out my car with a sign on because no one's ever gotten pulled over the car as a pizza guy. That's what I thought. So I was selling sacks. I just put my... My scale, my, my pack, I just brought one ba- uh, bag of weed every day to work. I put it in a red bag and walk up to my homie's house. I'm selling pizza, walk in, sell it, bounce, go to the pizza, the real delivery down the street type shit. Did it for like four years, man. I was just selling packs and dropping shit. And then I quit. And then right when I quit, I met my fiance now. I met her. We started hanging out. She showed me Instagram. I was like, what the fuck is this? I'm not putting myself on the internet. You're crazy. I, didn't, I only had a fucking... Not a, not a camera phone. You know what I mean? I, I had like the, and it would take a, you know, like a flip away phone. Like fuck a flip, flip yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. I don't play games on my phone. Yeah. And then, um, I fucking miss those days. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Nobody knows who you were. I was great. <laughs> oh. Even just not being on the phone that much. It's like, oh, it's like a job fuck, now. Bro. If it's they brought crazy. back the next tell, like the click, 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 beep, that was, beep. That's, that would be game over. That's brick oh, phone. No man. kid, brick phone would be Every sketchy dude sick. I know had one. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Or the, my, I remember using my dad's <laughs> the NASCAR one. shit, man. That was a long time ago. But yeah, I made an Instagram account. I saw people posted weed on. I'm like, yeah, bullshit. When are you going to jail? You know what I mean? Like, when the fuck are you done? And then I saw a page. They were just reposting people. And I click on their name and they had a whole account of just weed shit. And I'm like, that's the craziest thing I ever seen in my life. There's no fucking way. That this is going to happen. Actually, my friend Mike told me to download a, to, to post weed. Rosie got me Instagram and I just started posting stuff, like I'm having fun. Um, I was showing my face like this, but with pounds and people were like, what the fuck? And then I just started getting on the explore page a lot. Like the popular page, when Instagram first I've started. I've seen it a few times for sure. Posts, and it was, oh, I was on every fucking time and I just started getting a big following. And then. Right when I started getting a following, I'm like, I'm going to stop selling packs because I'm going to go to jail for sure. So I stopped selling packs, but that's when I had no money at all. And I started working at U-Haul. And <laughs> I was working for my dad and going to school still. And I'm, I just, I knew I was going to go poor and broke and fucking struggle. But also, I really liked making content. So that's when I'm like, fuck selling packs. It's fine. So I started struggling and shit <laughs> for like three years straight and it sucked dick. And then I started making a little bit of money with Push Trees. I started 2013, the very end. Um, so what happened with Push Trees, the logo? You said, uh, it was me pushing the tree. It's just me pushing the tree. I yeah, I was yeah. Like, I started over 20. And I made a shirt that sold out so fucking fast. And then my friend's like, you should probably have a brand. I'm like, bullshit. And then we just started making stuff. And then next year will be 10 years. And so the name. <sighs> next year will be 10 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Dude, congrats, bro. And the name Thank came you, right out of that. Just like push trees. Well, I wrote on the like a little app where you write text on a picture. I put I push trees on the tree. I just thought it was fucking funny. And then someone said, make a shirt. I'm like, well, all right, I'll try. And a clothing company reached out. And like, yeah, I'll help you. And we sold out in like under like we had like 36 hours. He hit me up. He's like, Are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, why? You're done. 
sold out. My like, bullshit. I got my first money I've ever made in my life legally, besides like my little shit jobs. And then I'm like, all right, here's a fucking brand. We started it and that just paid my rent because I didn't have weed money anymore. So that paid my rent. And I moved to LA because I was coming out here making so many videos, dude. And then that's really all that happened. I kept getting deleted though. So I really yeah. fucked, fucked everything. I'm only like account 28 now. You know what I mean? Wow. It's crazy, dude. It's like over. <laughs> Bless you. That's <laughs> all coming. It's all coming, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like, a, like almost like 3 million followers are now are deleted. So it's like ridiculous. Or like almost 2 million. But still, it's not. That's fucking bullshit. It is. Yeah. I mean, because you're not even, you're not, a, you're not a. There's a lot of packs on the page. But it's like. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying if there's one thing, my, maybe it was the pounds. But I don't but not offering anymore. for sale. You, like I can no. bring up a few yeah. people though that like have gotten away with like Josh from Raw. Like he's done that for a long time, and he's like, oh, it's CBD. Yeah, he. Uh, Man, I'm sure it really is. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like cereal. certain people that are buttoned up and like have shit dialed in like that. I feel like they've like gone past it. Like Jungle Boys has definitely like made it through. Well, here's a little story about that. Yeah. I was paying the same motherfucker at Instagram that Jungle Boys was, West Coast Cure, like four of the motherfuckers. I, we remember this. We remember paid this? them once time. Yeah, Weed Maps. And I'm the only motherfucker that got deleted. I only had to pay three. Oh, nice. Oh, man, you got to pay three. Okay. okay. We paid five. Oh, you oh, got to pay man. two. All right. I think we got middled. So when that guy got fucking deleted, Every, uh, everyone got gone. But I'm the only motherfucker out of those four big ones that never got it back. And they all have check marks now. It's like, yo, what the fuck? We have enough article. I, so I got blackballed, like blacklisted the second they saw my name on there. Or something because YouTube's deleted me too, but they gave it back like a month later. Damn. So, was that recent? They did it at 995,000. They did it the night I was hitting a million. They deleted my gank the channel. Yeah. And then Marty, I'm like, yo, do something. He's like, I'm going to pull the race card for you. And he did a month later and it came back two minutes later. No that way. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, Fuck thanks, man. That's like smart man. Down card, that sounds like, like shit. Planned. Smart man. Like it just so happens Dude, that how long, how long ago was that? Yeah, year and a half. Okay, yeah. But since then, I can be have my my views have gone straight. I'm not recommended anymore. I get everything age restricted. Uh, some shit gets blocked in certain countries. When you click on my page, my shit now goes. You sure you want to watch it? You got to click it again and go. Are you sure it's explicit content? And this morning, I got someone sending me a screenshot. Like I just watched one of your podcasts. In the middle of it, it just popped up. You sure you want to unsubscribe from this channel? Like they sent me a video of it. Like someone's doing something weird to me. So that's that. When they deleted you, what'd they say it was Nothing. for? Nothing. I didn't even get in a fucking strike. I didn't have one strike on the channel. So I was like, yeah, this is, this is weird. And something's weird going on. Have you had any like weird occurrences from like, you know, just making content? Cause I think that like with the attention just comes like shit <sighs> happens. <sighs> this fucking weirdos like i don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. like just no like more so like uh like your page you just wake up one day and you're like my page is oh that on. my bank accounts get fucked with a lot yeah. um i got deleted off vimeo which is the platform that rappers post percocets and fucking packs and post <laughs> videos i got deleted from my weed smile content like they deleted that i couldn't get a warehouse um for like a year and then we put marty's name on it got the first one the next one we tried um my bank accounts get fucked. I said I get fucked with a lot. I get locked out of my bank accounts a lot. Um, my social security number didn't match for like three years. I had to go do a whole thing. Someone's doing something weird to me. Holy yeah, wow. that's a oh. lot of weird shit. Yeah, but I'm just I don't give a fuck. No, nah, you're you you're know, trucking along. I don't care. It, it just, just comes with the territory at this point. It's, it's like, like that you're what just the like fuck. Did I do, man? Up, when you have a public image, it's like. You're going to deal with some weird shit. Huh? I've been trying to get the fake pages me deleted for years. They just trap on it. Like Telegram, Telegram, they won't delete them. But like I get deleted all the time, which is the craziest shit. I don't know. I, most of these stuff. companies are based out of California. I don't even post weed on my page anymore. I haven't posted weed. I haven't tagged my own weed companies, my own legal companies I don't tag. And I've still gotten deleted five times since then. And I was at account 22 when I started like no more weed, no more bong hits, no more smoking. Still get deleted. I don't get it. Push trees got deleted too at 150 the same day they offered me the check mark. So I don't know. It was something's weird, man. Wow. They definitely make it difficult for you to be in the industry and promote yourself the right way. Yeah. Like it's like, okay, no weed. Oh, that don't work. Okay. Well, talking about what we do. Like it's like, how do you even go? There's no navigational tools to get through this industry. And 
I mean, you've done so well, bro. You're you're at the top, and thanks, it's, man. It's the hardest part is navigating your social media, yeah. your YouTube, and all that. Yeah, that, that's the that's bro. the only uh that's the only downfall I have right now, or speed bump because I'm gonna get past it. it. Doesn't matter. Absolutely, that's the only. I started another channel on YouTube. It's like family friendly shit. Um, it's at like almost two hundred fifty thousand. It's doing great. Wow. I just don't use it because it's not weed shit, and that's what I like to do. So it's like I get so paid. I'm the, recommended though. The family friendly. Like, what do you? What type of content? I uh, do vlogs. Give fucking business advice. Lifestyle stuff. Story time shit. And I just don't say the word weed and I don't cuss. And my followers have a thing like, "Yo, call something else." And I say the same story sometimes because I never got paid ever off YouTube. It's like almost like 170 million views. Is just like it's like almost 2.5 mil they owe me and never gave it to me. Um. It's like a whole thing. I had it in the bank and it was then it was transparent and they never gave it to me. And they kept running ads after they demonetized me. And they started running weed ads on my shit. Like press, nug press that keeps running on there. Donald Trump campaign shit and CBD to your door. But they kept kept keeping the money. And they never gave it to me. Is why. They're letting that run ads. Nug press ads on my shit. Would not pay him a cent and wouldn't pay me and have not paid him. Oh, like deep, deep monetizes the and channel. Then they demonetized yeah, me a year ago fully, said forever. You're like, you're but on the family friendly out. one, it's on the family friendly. I'm good. I don't smoke, I don't show weed, but I don't you still cuss. get paid for it. I get, I get paid on that one. Yeah, I just don't like doing that much content because it's like I want to make weed content. That's what I do. It's where your heart's at. Yeah, yeah. like the base I, I of things. things. It's exactly. what people expect, probably. You can be I the like blippy, it. the yeah. next blippy. What's that? Blippy. Oh man, all the young kids watch it. He's got like. 150 million subscribers. I mean, it's Who? like the what? Blippy. Who? Oh, yeah, exactly. It's like a what kid. Do they do? It's a kid friendly show, but it's like the kid friend. I it's just know adult? this because of my niece. Yeah, yeah, it's an adult doing kid friendly stuff. And he's, he has, I've always thought that was guy, weird. The guy, I think the guy, I, 30 <laughs> like to 50 million a year. Blues I think. Clues. Oh, I think, holy shit. Oh, yeah, no, it's crazy. Are you fucking kidding but me? But you being demonetized is insane. Congratulations on the commercial I saw you in. You saw it? Did it pop up on the ad? I've seen it 10 times. Yeah, thank you very much. Grassdoor.com. Yes. Hey. I, for, I kept trying to find it and I was buying hash from this guy I never bought hash from and I fucking scream because i saw a pop-up behind him as he's selling me hash i felt so fucking stupid it's like, a cool commercial I, I, it starts out if you haven't seen it and you're on youtube watching this people are actually trimming grass with scissors and it's called like and they're packaging grass as if it's what we weed right and the whole process of them jarring up grass putting the labels on the, and then it getting delivered. Well, then this dude pops up and he's the one who shows up in the car with the bag of weed to the person's door in the commercial. Yeah. <laughs> it's so awesome. And the other push tree shirt. Yeah. Fuckers. And the music's cool. And the way they're like advertising it is progressive because this is exactly what we're talking about. They yep. try to take everything away. If that was actually a nug, that'd be a problem. Yep. So they've came out with a solution. So this okay. is the reason why we did it. I'm pretty sure I've talked. It's fine. It's going to be the first weed ad on national TV. That's why we did Only Grass. Oh, Fuck grass, yes, bro. And that one you saw is a short version. It's a full minute. It's a full minute one, and they have like a cop style. So I'm driving like, so I've been delivering, you know, bluegrass for like three years now as I'm turning as like a driver for the company. And they have like the trimmer girl. So, you know, I've been working here, blah, blah, blah. It's like, it's supposed to be like got milk. Like. It's just grass. Don't worry. It's just grass. That's how it ends. Damn. Grass store. So there, it's going to start on the Dodger games this next month and then the Giants games. And then it's supposed to be like on like a certain channel. So we're still trying to dial it in. But yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ten times I've seen it. The, I've been waiting for it to come out. So I kind of like just wait to see it hopefully on a YouTube ad. But yeah, dude. Fire. I was hyped as fuck. I was screaming the other day when I saw it. Finally got to see it, dude. How long ago did you do it? Like two, three months ago. That's fucking yeah, it's, awesome. It's cool, man. It was, it's my, I did a commercial like three years ago, like this production where I had lines and shit. It was very odd. Um, it with the same people, but wow. my same production people, my friend Charlie. Uh, he's on like Netflix. He's like an actor, dude. So he does a lot of weed content. He has an agency where he does crazy dope over the top production and shit like that. But we did one where I was a weed delivery service guy. <laughs> I mean, a weed dealer. And a pizza guy. And they didn't know my history of my life. And I pulled up, I'm like, I'm the weed delivery weed pizza guy. This is fucking bullshit. This is crazy. I had to sign on and they had a rain machine and like 
all these crane like i was shocked bro like i've never done anything more than like i use grow lights until recently like grow lights my phone that's how i film videos and then i got a videographer like three years ago and then that's when i changed but wow seeing like production that was fucking epic but that one that one was fucking awesome. You guys killed it. Thank you. It's I'm catchy. So it's hella catchy. It, I'm excited wait. that it's going to be on fucking TV, national yeah. TV. I it's mean, the first one. That's why I was so that's, hyped. That's, you know, pioneering the game into where it needs to go. We gotta, just got to be more creative and keep pushing because, you know, it's like this whole industry has been built off. Like the whole legalization has been built off of people just being like, nope, we're still going to smoke it. We still want it. Yeah. We want it. We want it. We want it. And now look, you know, and. It's stuff like that that's gonna just like finalize the d the d you know the stigma of everything, mm -hmm. so that it can just be move forward and people it can loosen up you know because naturally Especially that's how like it goes. That. That's fire. That is fire. Um, I'm at, I'd guys. like to get into the box a little mm -hmm. bit. Let's talk about this box, bro. <sighs> what's the hell a high club? HHC. I was like, what's a, what's something we could do with HHC? I'm like. Hella high club. <laughs> There's nothing else I can think of, man. Why'd you have to do it off that? No, because it was we, we sell HHC. Oh, so got like, it, you know got what? It. Let's uh, HHC got let's, it. Let's let's think of something. And it's a subscription box. We think what can it be like a club? Oh, this wow. that. So this is we just brought it, guys. We just because we just got the packaging last night. This is not even done yet. I just wanted to bring it to you guys. Um, this is all our new shit. Super dope. We're introducing. You guys know Hash House the. The brand oh, hash yeah. house. One of the top hash makers in Southern California. Thank you. Not all so California. that's my, one of my best homies and he's one of the owners. So we, we keep, me and him curate everything. And that's why we're so bougie with everything. Another hard worker from Florida. Yes. From Florida. Hey. That's why we're going back to, for the meet and greet <laughs> there. Cause we want to do one in his, in his part. Um, that's the battery. So that's for our carts and shit. Isn't the package so cool? I love Damn, the brand. It's fire. So cool, huh? Fire. It's for joints. I, I wanted it to be thick like that, so you, boom, you can keep a joint in that bitch after too. Absolutely, Damn. I love yeah. the oh, design, yeah. bro. The design is smart. Yeah, our whole level. team, dude. Our whole team is they they work twenty four seven. They're all so fucking cool. Um, so basically, what's not in here is coming out this week. Oh, those are our new ones. I haven't even smoked that bitch yet. I'm so excited. I mean, I did all the testing, but I haven't like Ooh. touched it physically and smoked it or. So anything, yet. the dopest liquid diamonds, fruity pebbles, HHC and HHCP, two grams. HHCP is just like a stronger version of HHC, like THCP, THCO. There's just so many cannabinoids out there that we can fuck with. And I won't say everything. I'll tell you guys after. The reason why people are getting shit faced is because our blend. So this is what happened. Hash House was making C or is doing a CBD run and the guy doing it for him just happened to be one of the largest uh, manufacturers, business people with the cannabinoids and goes, man, can we do something together? And I'm like, what do you mean we can ship it? Mm. So we can ship this 50 states. That's why we ship everything, all 50 states, everything, bro, everything we have. So the reason I brought up Hash House is our new gems coming out and our syrups are all from Hash House. They're all his, we got his hash, threw it into a fucking batch and we can legally sell it. Because the law is under 0.003 or whatever. This merit gummy a little bigger. So uh, technically the weight, 0 0.003, is a little bit more than normal. And they're like, Delta, CTHC, what is it going to be? Can we use hash? And we checked everything and we're literally using hash house in our new shit. Shipped all 50 states. It comes out in like a week or two. Bro, what? They're narcotic. This is amazing. It's fucking strong. Dude. So <laughs> explain, explain HHC. HHC is just another cannabinoid, man. That's all this is. It, when I first started telling people, like, think of it as Delta 11. That's how I wanted to think of, like, because you know what it, oh, they're Dude. good. I'll send you guys, we have this called Shark Tanks. You remember mm. at the old liquor stores? Like it, I mean, if you ate a full one, it's, you're, how you feeling? Okay, so this is, at the <laughs> beginning, I'm like, as I just ate the motherfuckers tail. Motherfuckers want diet weed. That's the first thing I thought, like, I'm going to get memed. I tried it, and I fucking almost blacked down the Uber. But I did like 1,300 milligrams, right? I was trying stuff, trying stuff. I got my Uber, got the spins. I fucking got like pale. I almost asked him to pull off right there with where the five meets the 110 or the 10. I almost had him pull over. I was on the throw the fuck up. And I, and I had to go to the bathroom. So I'm like, this is the worst combination ever. But I'm high. So I did it again the next day to make sure. Then I tried it again. Then I smoked the fucking pens. 
And then I tried our edibles and I kept doing it. And then I'm about a weekend. I'm like, I agree because I'm fucking shit faced. How? Because you think a can, an extra cannabinoid, like a different one besides CC won't do anything. Fuck no. We have CBG, CBNs, and we have other mixtures. I'll tell you off camera that are all cannabinoids. But the reason why it fucks you up so much is like a sedative. So if you ate 500 of that, depending on your tone, I've had people black out in at the event still, but I've also had people eat a thousand go, eh, I'm all right. Just like any edible. Just like some, any edible. Yes. Exactly. But um, they taste from me to you, I'd be a little careful. Yeah. There yeah. are some times where I eat them like, mm, I should have waited to get home before I ate this shit. You know? But Eating the edibles, edibles on an empty stomach. The, and, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the biggest thing. bad. But yeah. they're fucking bomb. It tastes they're they're really bomb. bomb. I would and I like how you did a gummy wasn't. shark. Oh yeah, they're a gummy shark because my favorite candy as a kid was a big blue gummy shark from a liquor store. And they're you know what I mean? Remember that fucking bag? With yeah. The, but they had the white bottom. I was like, you know yeah. what? Let's do gummy sharks. And that's our mold. We made the mold. So we're the only one with gummy sharks. So we have the hash rods and gummy sharks coming too. But when I say like you ever had Super Chill, that brand Super Chill? Yeah. Remember when the hash the house fruit trees? Uh, yeah, when the Hash House did a collab with them and they had the fruit shoes, that's how I feel. Or when they did the Pop-Tarts, that's how I feel off the edibles. So I'm kind of nervous for motherfuckers in Montana mm-hmm. to buy one of these from us and have a panic attack or something crazy. Because I'm going to be honest, man, not just because we sell it, I made sure they fucked you up first and then I agreed to make this company. Right. It took like three months to even start. And I'm so happy, man. Because my, my mom eats this shit every fucking day. My sister doesn't have to go to the store anymore. I was like, yo, what's your address? Ship you it legally. It's the best thing ever, man. That's fire. My grandpa's Mexican as fuck. and doesn't believe in weed or drugs. But he's been sick kind of recently. And I ship my grandpa fucking sharks. My face is on these packages. It's the craziest thing. My grandpa, Mexican ass, is smoking something. I mean, eating something I made. And he's just cutting them with scissors with his hoodie on. In the fucking living room was the craziest picture I ever got in my life. <laughs> That's awesome. It's crazy, dude. But like, <laughs> uh, none of this shows up on a drug test. So that's why, well, legally we can't say that because we're introducing so many more cannabinoids and the hash rosin. Maybe I should take that back. It'll all show up on a drug test <laughs> because I don't want people getting in trouble. Yeah, but at the yeah, very yeah. beginning, that was a big thing in my head because there was like a firefighters hitting me up like, dude, oh, yeah. I just smoked a fucking joint for the first time in 10 years. Thank you. Like, it was cool. Like people, I work for the city. Thank you. I have a pen in my bag and nobody knows. But now it's kind of like, we're kind of leaving that behind a little, which kind of sucks. Because then you're liable. Yeah. Cause I don't want people to like, I got a shark and a hashed gummy. I failed my test and then got kicked out of my house. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to happen. So now from now on, it's like everything shows up on a test. Cause we're introducing hash. I don't want anybody to get to think of me and go fuck that guy you know what i mean i wanted this to be fun not lose your job um so that's that's where the next step is really it's just we have so much more stuff coming out it's it's kind of crazy man dude so any state you can order these all states where can you get these the dopashop.com the dopashop.com wow bro this is insane and this is just like a 10 percent of what we offer dude we have we have so many fucking flavors and it's all john and i's like go what do we? What do you want to do? Let's do pie hole because it's his favorite strain. Like, and that's our number one seller in some states, which is crazy, man. Like, me and John are fucking snobs. So, like, no, we're not doing that strain. Fuck that strain. Or there's just so much stuff we reject because it's not perfect and it's not. I just don't want anybody to smoke something and go. This is what you thought was cool. Fuck this guy. Yeah, because it it's a sensitive thing. It matters. Yeah. It's like, your. Per- it's you're like putting something in your body from a guy you trusted because he made you laugh or some shit. It's not going to be that funny next time if it, th- if it wasn't fun for yeah. you. <laughs> you know? Straight up. I'd rather not make money. I like the pens though. They're interesting. Those are the Different. new ones. Those are the brand new ones, man. Like brand new. And the cart, that's the pen and the uh, battery for it. Fruity yeah, Pebbles is nice. Exactly it's so dope. Like peach rings. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. That identical. It's kind of shocking. That's uh, Hasha, that's his favorite one. Mine, I think, is, has to be the honeydew. You guys use a high quality cart too, which is always impressive. And then oh, I put the uh, we we made the whole the mouth hole big as fuck. Sucks for lint, but when you're ripping it, it's worth it. Because mm-hmm. I hate that shit. I have like a wood tip with a little baby ass hole. I'm trying or to get it gets like uh, oiled up a little bit. In yeah, there. this one it's not. 
Like it's a fucking this big. Wow. But yeah, dude, it's all 50 states. And that's like the big thing for us. Yeah, that's huge. (sighs) So you subscribe and you get a box per month. Oh, this is brand new. We haven't even introduced this yet. This comes out soon. It's going to have everything you can't, that's not released yet. That's kind of like an exclusive thing. It's just five to turn on. Yeah. Man, very impressive. Thanks, dope, dude. Dope, Super man. dope, too. Yeah. Our other partner, Claudio, which is like the back end business heart of the company, he makes all the shit work. Um, well, obviously, we have a team. We have a team of like 12 people that do, they do 12 hour shifts each. They, we ship everything by 2 30. And then they do the other shipment for the morning. Like they're wow, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. Which one is cream? That? Peaches and cream? It's like a peach ring. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Love the colors. I can see where the people that got you know, certain jobs and people that are like having to like operate thing, you know, like get stuff, get shit done still. It's like, this is perfect. Well, that's how I thought Except of it. Except maybe not a full yeah. one of these, right? But like the pins. Yeah, and- but that's how I thought of it first. Like that, yeah. our number one seller is California still. People yeah. Were, and our, and legal states for some, like people just fuck with it. It's just, I think it hits them different because I smoke the pen all the time. Yeah. I have hash pens and weed and shit. Mm-hmm. It's just, I, I don't know why. It's a different high. I notice myself like, mm, oh yeah, I hit the pen. <laughs> but the, the gummies, I, I, I don't keep them in my house as much anymore. I've probably eaten about seven, 800 of those since we started. It's not good for me. I get so fucking wrecked. Try this. You got to take a nap or some eat, shit or no, what? No, I eat them at night and I wake up, you know, when you get stuck, your eyes are yeah, stuck and you're just it's too much. I don't want to do shit. I sleep through alarms and I don't like it. Yeah. What well, I mean? It gets you fucked up, which is great. But for, yeah. But for certain people, it's yeah. like. But I eat nine or 10 at a time, like an idiot. I eat 10 fucking. Yeah. They come in a bag of 10. These are just the singles. Our big ones come in a bag and I eat the whole bag every, because they're bomb. Yeah, they are bomb. Fucking bomb. They taste great. And it's like nine in the night. I'm like, oh, do we got candy? Edibles. It's the worst thing you could do. That's, dude, that's the trap right it's there. The tra- <laughs> that's the trap. We got peach rings and fucking watermelon slices. So what am I going to do? Like, you're going to munch on I'm going to fucking eat that shit right now. And I'm like, yeah, it's an excuse. It's our brand. Like, yeah. I got it. Like, I'm testing. It. Yeah. I do it all Still the time. Still fucking test. <laughs> <with> <laughs> the brand. This is perfect, though, for anyone that doesn't, that has like restless nights or anybody that like, like the, these edibles. The I mean, like, yeah, the man. Sleep for sure. It, when it really. Um, like that's what people were finding a lot of relief in with CBD when it first landed and then Delta nine. And like, you're finding these terpenes that actually work in like great ways for the body and for the sleep. For, and the, for the sleep mind. is the number one thing. Yeah. If I need to go to sleep, I, I mean, I just don't like waking up. Uh, I hate that feeling. I need to get you done. Mm. And I, I want to put stuff off in the morning when I wake up fucked up. That's the only downfall for me. So I stopped eating them. I was eating like a th- like probably eight or nine every fucking day, every night. And it was ruining my life, man. Like, <laughs> I gotta be honest. I can see why the dopest <laughs> shop goes off, though, man. To be able to offer stuff like this and all the others. I mean, it's it's epic, bro. That's oh, epic. This is yeah, dope. This yeah. Is all like you guys are really creating, coming up with your own shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This, I haven't had a pen like this ever. Peaches and cream. Dude, this is crazy. We go through like 15 variations of each flavor. And that's the thing, me and John, I go to his house, we take dabs and go, all right, let's start marking shit down. Like, number one, egg garbage c perfect you know what i mean c of uh, number 11 is perfect and then we just have to go through them the only thing i feel bad is like i don't like it but it's a full cart so i just try to give them to people like do you care if it doesn't taste great because R&D. i'm not going to offer that yeah r and d like yeah. i can't throw away 30 grams i'm a piece of shit like the the pot enemy is still like nah fuck that even though i didn't like those variations i gotta <laughs> give them to somebody so that's the only problem we have with research is like, I have a lot of leftover SKUs I did never going to use. So I just find people, but I also don't want them to like have the impression that that's our brand. Like these ones taste like shit. This is what we offer. So it's, that's the only downfall with, with, with research, but I get shit faced weekly doing research. It's great. And it's my job. It's the craziest thing. Like that's what I'm at work. I'm eating edibles and smoking pens. It's tight. Cause now we have, we have pre-rolls and fucking gigantic ass, uh, infused hemp blunts like with we, we have we have concentrates wow the weirdest shit dude because you guys remember diamond baron a couple years ago yeah remember when he was posting those separation pictures mm-hmm. with the, that's what the fucking diamonds looks like in ours and i always feel like this should be fucking illegal <laughs> every time i'm like looking at it, like this should be fucking illegal 
Because why and how? But it tests for what it needs to to pass. <laughs> it's so, crazy. Yeah. Dude, it's fucking insane. That's when I see people dab globs, it's like, that's our shit. It's, it's We have diamonds, butter, fucking sauce. What are the dabs like? The, they're shockingly fucking awesome. Wow. Papaya one is, that's John point. is a fucking snob. Hash House is a snob. And that full dabs diamonds of our hhc which you would never off a mothership it's like what the fuck it's on it's off camera it's like we really we i really fuck with it it's just weird it's just weird to be able to go like oh you're out got you hey can you send a package my friend because it's gonna get there it's you're not gonna get in trouble it's just weird it's weird to uh it's like a hypothetical like what if you could ship this and rosin and gum he's like bullshit so we found that damn that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That Explaining so it to people who are always like, what? Well, yeah. like like Delta 8 or Delta 9, like stuff like that. What do you feel about those products? Or something I've like tried the tried? Delta 9. I didn't really like the Delta 8s. I mean, not Delta 9. I didn't like Delta 8. Um, uh, what do you think about the effects? And it's weird, I didn't right? really feel that. Yeah. I, I don't know. Slight body, if Barely, anything. Barely, because I've only tried one brand. So maybe I'm biased. Yeah. I've only tried one other brand besides ours. Because I didn't want to try everyone's shit and go, oh, ours tastes like this. Make it. Di I want them, like our own personal yeah. real opinion. Yep. And everyone that tells me, like, out of any product of HHC or any cannabinoid, like this one's the best one. And we sell out of certain strains because there's a reason why I picked it. And some of them, like the Fire OG, bro. I'm, if I can give you something that tastes like a punch in the face, OG taste, ah, we are winning. And it's the craziest shit. Like, we really do. It's very Straight cool. Straight up. It's cool. Sour Diesel is the one that makes me like, oh, it's like, it's got that fucking taste. I mean, in a good way, it sells like crazy, but it's got that fucking sour taste. The garlic cookies we have taste like fucking body odor, garlic cookie, musk, fucking dabs. But me and John, we're at a fucking, we're at some day club thing. We're like, let's have a lunch at some place like adults and shit and then we were testing out the garlic cookies like 30 variations and i remember we both hit it and looked at each other like some like some movie shit like that's the one it's disgusting so that's how we pick shit like if he hates it and i don't like and i hate it we both know that it's not gonna go like i said we're fucking snobs we would have 300 flavors but we only have like what 20 for That's a reason. Dope. We're still I mean, trying. You guys would know because you, you're you actually able to get all the, the straight up GMO. You're able to get, everything. you know, he smoked every, you guys have smoked everything. So then to be like, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, now let's recreate this in something in a form where we can actually sell this nationwide. That's, that's incredible, bro. Really Thank incredible you. work. You and him. And, and for people that don't know, Hash House is one of the top producers of high end hash in all California. I mean, yeah, exactly. Fire, bro. His stuff is top Pop. grade. It's all I smoke, dude. Well, 90%. I've been trying little companies here. I just tried this one the other day. Uh, Megadelics for my homie. Fucking fire. Crazy. He's, he's dope, too. He stands like alone. Person. He's like, he, his, his stuff looks different than anybody's. Like, you're like, oh, okay, that's you look at it and smell it, You're like, oh. Yeah. Definitely super clean. Wow. Um, I usually, I'm a heady ass, I'm a, I'm a snobby ass bitch, not a heady. Like I only smoke OG weed. This is the first time I'm not smoking OG in years. Wow. Uh, but it's my friend. When I went to the Indiana, the Chicago thing, somebody I knew from the cups, probably the same cup we were at, wow. used to work with a company there. And he's like, yo, it's the last cup. I'm moving to something, something in Indiana. I go, what the fuck? I'm at the meet and greet. He walks up. I'm like, why do I? Oh, shit. I'm like, so this is where you moved, huh? Wow. What are the odds that we picked? 10 minutes outside of where you moved. Wow. Five years later, and he gave me some fire. So that's what I'm smoking. It's great. Nice. It was that's just awesome. purple weed, though. I often don't smoke that, so I'm stoked. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. So, I how just, did it get, so talk about that, the event. You did a uh, meet and greet. Yeah, we did a meet and greet. Um, so this is what happened. I had a, a guest on, my sh on the podcast, GB from Merced. He's a rapper, and he's from Merced, my hometown. That's fire. And he came on the show, and I've never been fucking motivated by anybody in my life. He's fucking six blocks from where I grew up in the fucking ghetto of gangs and bullshit. Right down the street. I always see his music videos. Like, he is a good artist. He's going to be super fucking popular. He's a Mexican kid from my town. 
and he's been filming videos at the fucking park or where I used to practice football and shit. I'm like, dude, who is this dude? I had so many people hit me up, got him on the show. He's doing back to school drives, free fucking shoes for kids, donating money, food. I, I couldn't believe it. So after we got off, after we got off the camera, we're like, dude, how can I fucking do this with you? So we're like, just do a meet and greet. He has a shoe store, the only shoe store that's ever been in my town, like a high end shoe store in the ghetto, in the Martin Luther King and Twelfth, right where, like, right where it's ghetto. And I'm like, dude, let's do it. So I did a fucking my first meet and greet I've ever done. I did it in Merced at this little ass spot, and uh, I was just talking about this. I know I have like fans and people. Uh, but I always have this fear of like, I'm going to walk out to a crowd like, yo, so, like, oh, damn, why did I do this? People don't give a fuck. But I went to Merced and people showed up for real, like hundreds of motherfuckers for a little town. I couldn't believe it. So I got back and then the, the dopest, like all my guys, the owners were like, dude, let's do a tour. But like, we'll pay for everything from the company and we're going to go, you know, state to state. I'm like, fuck yeah. So we started planning it, did one at Ziggy's. Um, the turnout was crazy. I could not believe, like, I was thinking like, I hope a hundred people come. I'll sign some stuff. Dude, huh, like 300, 400 people came. I was like, wow, it's hot. Thank you for fucking standing here. Um, it was cool. Great. It was super sick. We did one right outside of Chicago. Chicago's right on the border of Indiana. I didn't know that. Uh, geography is not my shit, I guess. And we went to Hobart, Indiana, super small farm ish town, just like Merced. When we were pulling in, I was like, yo, this is my town. This is fucking awesome. Because nothing ever happens in little towns. I was kind of like, fuck yeah. And a lot of people were asking, why didn't you do Chicago? But we could do Chicago any fucking time. You know what I mean? Like the reason I told you guys off camera, but the reason mm -hmm. is the smoke shop, tobacco vape, tobacco kings of vape, shout out to Wally. Could not believe he fucking did this. He had our products in a store. He's a small, small shop. He asked every customer, like, you follow this guy, Dopezola? If I had a pop-up, would you come? And he had a signature list of like seven, 800 people in a little ass town that just happened to come. And they all happened to fucking follow us. So he sent it to us. And my partner's like, look, dude, we should do this. This guy's super nice. And that's my thing. If they're super fucking cool, chill, and nice, I'm fucking down. And he is that guy. So we got there. We pulled up. Well, the night before. They sent us a video and there's people in a fucking line lined up in the front of the store and it's seven o'clock the next the, before the day before. And I'm like, bullshit, FaceTime me right now. I want to talk to them. <laughs> and we FaceTime. I was talking to everybody in line. I'm like, are you guys fucking serious? Like you guys are the shit. And, and he told them all to go. They'll keep their spot place, but everybody just slept in their car in the parking lot. And there was people like, I just took dabs all night and fucking waited. I'm like, this is amazing. So I get there. Like it starts at 12. But that line, I'm like, let's get there at like 9.30. Fuck it. And just, just, I feel bad. People are waiting for me and I'm just at the hotel taking dabs. It's not 12 yet. Like, fuck that. We got there at 9.30 and there was like 45 people in line now. I couldn't believe it. I went in, set up, came back out and there's like 100 people in line. And it's 9.30. So we just said start. We started at like 10 o'clock. I was just signing autographs for fools. First couple hundred people, I had shirts for them. I would have got more if I knew. I couldn't believe it, dude, how many people came. People drove from like Indiana, I mean, Indiana, St. Louis. Uh, I had some Kentucky, Canada, New York. Like, bro, I'm going to New York this month. Like, I know, but fuck it. Like, all right. Um, some dude got off. He was in his football gear. He's like, I just played a game right now and I knew you were here. And he was in his football gear. Like, this is the craziest shit ever. <laughs> That's fucking and, dope. And, <laughs> and every one of them, like I said, like, where are you from? How old are you? Um, where'd you come from? Like, how far did you drive? And our demographics, all, I got, there's a bunch of people. I made it all ages. That's why I didn't do a smoke out. I'm like, I want all ages. As Merced, I realized there was like 30, 40 fucking kids that were in high school that obviously did school. I felt kind of dumb. Like, did you guys ditch to come here? I didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> like, yeah, man. but I realized, like, how can I leave you guys out? Fuck that. We'll smoke another time. It's fine. They're like, nah, bro, we weren't going anyway. <laughs> no, for real, that's the vibe i got uh, I, we dropped out that's already. the vibe i got dude but everybody uh, that showed up was so nice as we made it all ages and like i said we booked it from a uh, from 12 to 5 and dude we did 9 30 to 9 30 we we changed our flights and got a new hotel i got a new room because i'm looking at the line and it didn't get shorter and then he counted and he did like a tally 
like a like a thousand motherfucking people showed up. Holy fuck, dude! Bro, a That's thousand insane. people. I couldn't that fucking insane. believe it. More than L.A. I was wow. shocked. I couldn't That's pretty believe crazy it, man. to think a small town, a small more town. than. And I asked everybody. Huge city. Seventy percent said they were like, dude, I live down the street. Like, bro, that's, I work there. One guy was on his break from this place next door. Like, I came out here to see what it was. And you're standing out here. What the fuck? And a lot of people were just dry. Like I said, it was like a small town. So everybody that was just stopping and looking. What the fuck? And like taking pictures, like old people, like taking pictures, like, what the fuck? Because people just had bongs. We were giving so much shit away at a smoke shop. So we gave hell of bongs, gravity bongs, like the PlayStations and all that shit. And, it's a small town. I think nobody's ever seen anything happen like that. And they, they let's take the whole parking lot. It was great. Um, I couldn't believe it. Shout out to everybody in that, that came out because I couldn't believe like, how happy people were. It was shocking. bro. I've never felt like, oh, you guys care. Oh, my God. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That, dude. dude, what a big win, bro. That's I'm awesome. I'm so excited. Man. You're like proving what can be done, too, because- it's it's a big win for cannabis, honestly, and a big win for anybody involved. Because like you know, all the shit you've already been through twenty eight accounts, all this. It's just like, and people are still coming out. That's and right. Want it? Yeah. It's like, damn, you know, just yeah. let them let them live. You know, yeah. at that point. And a lot of it was a podcast. Seventy percent of the people came out like, "Where's Marty?" I got straight got kids, up, motherfucker. It's the biggest thing here. Where's the other person? <laughs> it was crazy. Like, where's Marty? Yeah, he didn't come. Like. For real, next really time Marty's got to be show. there. Marty's got to come spin. No, I fucking next one. FaceTimed him and like, mm -hmm. yo, look. And he goes, are you fucking serious? Because we were always wondering, should we do the podcast, live podcast? Would people show up? Yes. I'm, yes, but they will. You get a lot of uh, flavorful gifts and uh, nuggets um, and things? or what? I posted, yo, no smoking section because I realized the laws. People brought some fucking fire. Yeah. There was, I'm, there was one dude. He had an Athena hat. I go, hmm. And he pulled out some weed. He goes, here you go. And I looked at him. I go, what the fuck? Oh, you actually grow weed, huh? And then I found out who he was later through a bunch of other shit. I'm like, oh, wow. There's some little secret <coughs> cannabis boutique motherfuckers out here. It was pretty cool, man. Um, some, some people like drew pictures and shit, which was the dopest shit. Like really put effort. And this, like I said, I met people. I have a photographic memory, like a very strong one. So I can remember people's names with their profile picture. So I was remembering like people I've been talking. I met like five or six people I've been talking to for like three years and up in the chat. Never met them. No, no what they look like, but they came up like, by the way, I'm so and so like bullshit. And the look on their face that I actually knew the fuck they were was the best payoff of anything I've ever done. Like they looked at me like, are you fucking serious? You remember me? I'm like, oh, of course, fucking Kevin. Like. Bro, I've been talking to you for years. Like, I, it's not a bot. That's me, motherfucker. And uh, one dude, Evo King, dude, that's his name. All right, I, I can always say it. it's like one long word. Evo King with a green profile. He came. I've been talking to him for so long. He made me a fucking sculpture of a mushroom, like a psychedelic mushroom. It looked like I bought it at a high end store. And then he made me pushing. And it goes together, a sculpture. And it, I'm, it's going into my fucking apartment right now. I'm, putting, I'm trying to find out where to put it. I'm like, I couldn't fucking believe this bull putting so much effort for this shit. Wow. Like, it really made me like my day. Patch. It was crazy, dude. I was so excited just to that, see people happy. And they were fucking hyped. There's an old Ginny. She's like 86 years old, watches my shit with her grandson. They stood in line all day. No. They fucking sat in a chair. He brought the grandma. Just, That's hilarious. It was great, dude. Oh, bro. That's cool as hell. I would have broke down over that. It was <laughs> so That's sick, a goal. That's a man. goal. Of big goal. Grandma of bought her grandson. That's crazy, yes. bro. That's and she took a dab at the end. She was dabbing off the nectar collector. That's hilarious. She was tight. Yo, what up? It's Blackleaf. I'm here at Grow Generation. And guess what? Drip Hydro storming the market. All the best growers I know are switching to it. And guess what? There's a reason. Because it's preserving terps. I keep hearing that. Preserving terps. And that's why we're here with Sunshine. Facility advisor, facility manager. Overall, the man with Drip Hydro. Listen to why it's different, man. What's going on, guys? Sunny here with Drip Hydro. Thing is, at the end of the day, we just wanted to make a simple, clean, cost-effective nutrient line that nobody has really seen on the market right now. Nobody uses really our chelation formulas. Uh, the micronutrients that we have pulled to make this line is really just what makes it 
overall bringing that consistency and quality back to what we want to see in growing herb again and overall at the end of the day it's still really light on your wallet it's a five-part nutrient line and again if you're not staying sterile or you have a big facility and you don't want to run rock wool and you want to run a mix of cocoa with an enzyme or something you don't even have to run flow with it so at the end of the day it's just saving you money on your wallet while bringing the consistency and the quality of turps back we wanted to bring the turps back and bring the soul back to growing versatility cost effective and quality i mean what else can you ask for drip hydro first smoke of the day black leaf approved peace damn this place is huge i gotta get what i need and get out of here man i'm in a rush what whoa black leaf Oh, you already know. What are you doing here? I basically live here. Grow Generation, can filters, Power SI, Athena products, Lux Lighting. Man, I mean, I basically live here. Grow Generation Store is the largest hydroponic store I've ever been to. It's crazy. The largest hydroponic retailer in the nation with over 60 locations, so you know they got one near you. It's growgeneration.com and at growgeneration on Instagram. Tell them first smoke of the day sent you. I know you travel around a lot, like, uh, anywhere that really surprised you how fire the weed was like is there anyone that just, anywhere that just blew you away where you were like god the weed's so good here i got i be never honest, thought dude, it would be i don't travel anywhere that weed's not legal so there you go until really either indiana and then hash house's wedding the only times in my life since i've been an adult that i went somewhere where weed's not legal because i feel like that's a field day for a motherfucker like oh that kid that just taunts us on the internet let's get it. yeah you're right Fuck right. that, because I was in Mexico, dude. I, well, it's been years. I brought Halloween to Mexico for his fool's wedding. And I'm walking through the fucking airport. <laughs> like, all right, let's get through this bitch. All right, nobody stop. And then I just hear, yo, sir. I'm like, fuck. And he turns like, yo. I'm, oh, my God, security guard. I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm on my doors are right there to the taxis. And I'm just trying to get the fuck out. And this security guard stops me, walks up, and he's like, I like your story times. Like, oh, you motherfucker, you gave me a heart attack. Like, thank you for watching. And I fucking cried inside and walked out. Like, I'm so scared. I thought it was done in Mexico. <laughs> Didn't even get out of the airport, dude. I brought zips of jo pre roll joints. I was like, I'm out. I'm going to fucking jail in Mexico. But no, he was just a fan. He could have just been like cooler about it. Like, didn't have to scare the fuck out of me. But obviously, he didn't know. But he should have known if he's monsters my shit that I'm gonna bring some weed. Yeah, give throw the peace sign up and say, "Hey, Yola, like and your that, shit." Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yo. it's like, oh, I remember like the hair, the neck. Oh man, I thought I was done. Like, there's, there's, oh fuck that. I went to Utah and they extorted the shit out of me in Utah. But I was passing. I've heard through. stories from Utah. Fuck Utah. Yeah. Wow. Not I've the heard stories it, from Utah, yeah. but the, that like they trip about even just like a nug, bro. What was so? What happened? I was with this edible company, my friends, they were my, there's some old motherfuckers. And uh, right before I was going, I was in LA. I'm like, I'm going to bring a 10 pack. I'm going to Colorado. I'm going to tax the fuck out of somebody. So I did stop selling weed, but sometimes maybe I would have sold a little bit of weed. When I was going to Colorado, I'm like, this is the time. So I told my friend, give me a 10 pack, fool. I didn't bring any money, motherfucker. I'm going to, I didn't think about it. Give it to me. And he was taking too long. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to get on the road. And thank God I fucking did, because I got to Utah, I'd still be in fucking jail right now. They do not play around. They speed trapped us on some bullshit. Uh, I know a lot of people will know. There's a, from Vegas to Utah to Denver, like through that path, there's a, like, there's a mountain that goes from 75. And once you hit a turn, it's automatically 50. But there's a cop waiting at the sign. Then they got us. We're smoking a joint. It's nine in the morning. And, uh, I only had like an ounce of weed in jars in the center console and he pulled us out. My friend had all the edibles and the guy was just so happy to get us. He saw duffel bags and went and just looked at us like, fuck it. He spelled Mercedes wrong, Hollywood and wait on the, on the work, work paperwork. Like this guy's a fucking moron. And we were in a regular SUV, like a Mercedes rental. And he goes, this is the nicest car I've ever seen. Where are you from? Hollywood? Looks on the IDs. Oh, you are from Hollywood because my friends are. Well, they, old fucks. They were my friends. And yeah, he loved it, bro. He called like six more squad cars, like, we got some motherfuckers. They came down, pulled the duffel bags, and they, it looked like Christmas Day. They opened them, it was all closed. They looked so <laughs> bummed. They found one box of hella edibles, and he goes, about five pounds. Of, I'm going to say you got five pounds of weed right here. 
but in edible form. And we're like, no, sir, that's not how it works. That's cake. There's a weight. Stupid fuck. He goes, well, you can deal with it later. Put your hands, but not me. It was my friend's car. And he arrested him. Dude, he arrested him. I get back in the car. He's like, you can come down, bail him out. We're like, perfect. About an hour and a half, hour 45 into the mountains was their station. So we had to follow them on a dirt road. I thought he was just going to murder us out there. We go through this little footloose town, right? We go to this footloose town. We stop. We go to the, call the bail guy. We're like, we don't have five, five bands on us. What's wrong with you? And this is when I was just making my fucking rant with Bush Trees, like week to week, like I was struggling, I told you. And he's like, what do you got? That's what he say. We got a wedding ring. We'll bring it in. They were just trying to play us out there, dude. Like, well, what do you got? Like, oh, you guys did this on purpose. Like, you get motherfuckers. And like eight hours later, he let us out. And we let our, our my friend out. And I got a ticket for the weed I had in my backpack. The guy couldn't figure out the center console, didn't find all the weed. So there was a whole zip of weed still that he never found because he didn't know how to press both buttons, I guess. He searched the whole car, never found that. Uh, found the eighth of weed I had in my backpack. I got a ticket, had to pay this fucking fine. Didn't know till two weeks ago that my license is suspended. This is five years ago. Bro, I just had to pay a ticket finally to get my license back last month. And this all came back to me. But they extorted me so fucking hard. Like, where are you from? Well, what do you got? And then when he was in the cell, I guess they busted these other kids with a speed trap. They had a U-Haul full of fucking clones that they were bringing uh, to Den- from Vegas to Denver. And then when we get to Denver, we tell everybody what happened. Like, oh, highway so-and-so. Like, yeah, that's, the, that's the one. So everybody's been arrested there, I guess. They played us. They got me. They extorted the shit out of us. But I mean, it was fine in the end. But yeah, it's Utah. Fucking yeah. Utah, huh? Bro, oh, Lord. They I think were you're getting a good boy system. You're definitely getting extorted for plants. Oh, they got oh, yeah, you all full of clones. Oh, oh, holy and shit. And the thing is, I almost had the 10 pack too. Yeah, that and that's when I saw my future like gone. This is over. And I was like doing fucking Instagram. I was going hard. We went out to like a high. It's like, that's why I was going out there for my friends getting an award for some weed shit. Like, dude, this is the worst thing that's going to ever happen. You're like, next time we're flying. Yeah. Or it's like, listen, if you're going to have a weed event, have it somewhere where it's actually legal. You know it what was, but we well, they did. They had to drove Utah. through, oh, they drive like, through oh, Utah. We could have gone through New Mexico Lee, where it's rough. legal. My friend wanted yeah. to take the scenic route or some bullshit. <laughs> He's been there before. That's the thing that got me. Like, you brought this on yourself. I don't know. Well, Long hair dude, middle of the day, car full of smoke. It was our fault. Getting high at 9 a.m. It happens. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it it happens. Happens. Okay, road trip. You're looking back, you're like, oh shit. I just taking a video <laughs> of smoke like, of the oh, day. Man. Exactly. That's exactly what happened to us. I was just taking a video, like, look at this scenery scenery. Mm-hmm. It's fucking Two minutes later. Wire. Fuck. God is. Oh. I was going through Zion National Park and I like drove Where's that. It's in Utah. Oh. Or, or uh, Zion. It's, I, I don't know if it's Zion National Park, but it's National Park and Zion. It's in Utah. And as I was coming in. Which, you know, all parks are federal parks. The lady was like, ooh, you smell interesting. And I was just like, oh. my heart dropped. I literally had joints rolled all time. I was like, oh, my God. So then I'm going in there the whole time. I'm like, it's like one way, you know, one way in, one way. Not one way, but it's like a two-lane pass-through road. And I'm just like, yeah, they don't, they don't appreciate that shit out here at all. And then I had a couple of friends tell me, too. They're like, yeah, Utah is like. They're taking everyone out of the car immediately. Like it's oh, pretty crazy. Instantly, the first thing he yeah. said, first thing he said was, "You know, marijuana is illegal in the state of Utah." First, I'm like, "Fuck, man, this guy's not fucking around." And he had a big hat. I'm like, oh, it's over. Like, you know what I mean? Real it's mountain men out there. Done. The combo of the hat and the talk. The you talk, know, you're the hat, your hands on the fucking yeah, knees. Yeah. Hey, oh, we're fucking done. Damn. <laughs> yeah, some people, some places. Yeah, they just a little. Te- they'd rather uh, if you had a bottle of Jack, it'd be completely fine. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it doesn't. Cannabis ain't happening. No, and we can't sell HHC in a dispensary because it's not taxable. But oh. I can sell that bitch at Seven Eleven. Isn't that fucking what? stupid? Crazy. So you can sell it in a Seven Eleven. You can sell it anywhere in the fucking world. It's legal. Anywhere that wants to sell fucking smoke stuff, grocery store. But I can't sell in a legal dispensary because it can't be taxed that right. 
in the same fashion, I guess. No. Crazy, huh? The little loopholes of like, I mean, it's not like a big deal. Just, wow, you can't make your money so we can't sell it. Oh, fuck. I don't know. That is interesting. Who was, uh, who do you think your biggest guest for you personally? Like, what was the biggest landmark on your show? Someone that you got where you just were like, wow, man, that's like, uh, ex- you know, someone that you just felt like, oh, for accomplished. sure. Um, we can't say it yet, but I damn near shed a tear. I, we just booked a group, my favorite rapper of all time. We just booked a group the other day and I fucking, I was, I screamed in the restaurant. I was in Chicago. I was like, fuck. I screamed like in the restaurant audibly. That will come. But that's like a surprise thing. I'll tell you guys right now. So stay tuned. Yes. But I think uh, I think I was smoking a joint during the show and there was a big cloud and it was Tony Hawk sitting next to me and a cloud hit him in the face. I'm like, this is the fuck, one of the best days of my fucking life. <laughs> and he's all chilling. <laughs> and he don't smoke, but I yeah, remember it hit him in the face and I went, like, bro, t- Tony Hawk's right here. Oh my fucking oh, God. Fucking blue and cloud on Tony, Tony Hawk's yeah, face. Blue cloud Tony Hawk's fucking face. Yeah, and that, mother- that motherfucker is cool he's chill um that's like a professional bro he was the coolest just like the coolest dudes who spin fuck that was awesome um uh when steve Steve steve-o came Mm -hmm. and that was really fun that was cool because like my uncle johnny passed away and shit but we used to watch jackass like crazy and it was like i wish i could text you motherfucker like look at this picture you know like that's what had me like that's the one that got me like the most stoked um you guys had great banter back and forth too you and steve-o you guys full, like full, just full flow. Great. he's great he's you know? he's a he's a really nice person um what a dude, career we had a lot of people we've had yeah. a lot of people on man uh dr drew was really fun to talk to just because it was so opposite and uh that was great he's a really nice dude he's a buff ass fool i didn't know that he's good beat guys my ass. <laughs> what the fuck yeah dude um I don't know. I'm trying to think of all the people we've had on now, but we've, I mean, every time I'm doing the podcast, I tell Marty every time, every time I turn, I turn the lights off and I close the door. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, this is my job, like a life now. I get like so excited. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. And that's it. Every episode though, every episode, me and Marty, when I lock Surreal. up, like, like that end of Fresh Prince, he's like, when everybody moves out, like, all right, let's go. It's time to leave. Like, I just feel that every fucking time, even especially when it's just me and him. Cause we get done. Like we just had a conversation for work it was our job and people are so happy. That's like, it's my main thing. Like are people fucking stoked? Cause that's the, the most, most important shit. It really is what, yeah. what it all comes down to. Mm-hmm. When you're yeah. smoking, uh, you say you smoke OGs. Yeah. Like uh, what are some of your favorites? Those I are- smoke the same OG from the same person for five years. My homie OG. My homie OG, he runs a DTPG, the dispensary down mm-hmm. here. He runs that. So you ever see that fucking, that fuck, remember the little homies you get in the machines for 25 cents, the little toys? If you ever see that guy, basically, running the shop, that's my homie. He's like one of my best friends. Um, I got weed from him. He's one of the best growers I ever had, uh, like as a friend, and he stopped growing weed. So I've been fucking on the hunt. And lately, dude, for like nine months straight, I have been smoking Kush Mountains from CBX. It is so fucking clean. That's all. Unless I can, f- somebody please show me some other shit because I am spending thousands of dollars a month. <laughs> Bro, I, they let me buy the little QP box. It's a half yeah. pound, but usually uh, we'll just say they let me buy the little QP box and I'm cashing out. I'm like, I don't sell weed anymore. I feel so ashamed spending fucking bands on jarred weed. I feel like such a fucking idiot right now. It's not a pack. Like, I'll just buy a pack. It's not trustworthy right now. Motherfuckers are not flushing things. I, I'll smoke fucking tangy tomorrow if it's clean. I don't give a shit. I just don't like hitting a joint. I'm like, ah. Yeah. My number one thing. So I got a lung infection. And ever since then, I feel like so like sensitive to weed. How, I, how, how'd that go down? I was buying all these Kangland packs from Santa Cruz. And I wasn't searching shit because I was selling like, packs of people so i was just busting it down and one day i'm sitting there and busting I'm like oh it's molded i didn't know i'm just grinding down you know you have people at your house there's joints going you're not looking and mm-hmm. like watching youtube clicking the next shit and i was smoking it for weeks and i just noticed i had a really bad and i had a lung infection and ever since then i just have like a 
What do they do for that? Long of the adequate smoke smoking. Condition? It was terrible. I think I took like I, I antibiotics. Suck dick, man. People don't know Damn. about how bad smoke and mold can be. You oh, know, they they think like, no oh, joke. just rub it off. Just having mold in your fucking in your your house, your apartment, I had black or anything. Mold in my house too at Dude. the time, and now yeah. you're combusting you it, and now you're combusting it and inhaling oh, it. Yeah, you know, it's fucking, crazy. It ruined my chest for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's why I was only smoking from the same guy. I got him, go, ooh, fuck yeah! So I kept buying it for years. And I try the CBX. I'm like, all right, legal weed that I can smoke. I'm fucking all for it. Because sometimes motherfuckers don't got packs. I haven't bought a pound in two years. I feel so weird. Like, not having a bag. I just search in. Is the, you guys know what I'm saying. The turkey bag. It's the, the one best, that everyone it's knows. It's the feeling yeah. of like, oh, I have weed. I know I do, because look at this bag. But now I have jars. I go through like, it's, I have no weed. You know how many times I've gone through jars? Like, I smoked I thought you had so many. Them. I found one this morning. I was hyped. I've been dabbing <laughs> only for like two months straight now. I haven't been smoking weed at all. I don't know what's going on. I what, these what's, your, what's your method? I've been that? using only the Carta by Focus. I haven't touched my rig. I'm at like what is so what is that? It's 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 essentially. I got to be honest. The best dabber I've ever electronic rig I've ever tried in my fucking life. I've been ripping it nonstop for about two months. I spent more money on hash. I thought I didn't smoke that much hash. My Dude, homie, hash people that tell me they save money by smoking hash, no, it cracks don't. me up. No, they don't. It's like, nah. An eighth jar you figure would be better. I'm flying through those like in a day. So I feel like a fucking idiot spending $2,600 on a little bo uh, ounce box. I'm flying through three a month. I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> what is wrong <laughs> with me? Like, I'm put, adding money up. Like, what is wrong with you? But I, I was doing that with the weed. So then I'm like, dude, what? but I write this shit off. I get to write it off because this is my job. So on my yeah. CPA, like, keep all your receipts for your weed. I'm like, thank you. So I write off almost every single fucking thing I smoke, which is the bet. I smoke weed for a living. So technically, wow. I'm allowed to write off my fucking expenses. It's so tight. That's it. It's huh? so tight. Bro. It's That's a fucking so write off. Look, dude, we got to look into that. No, do it. <laughs> do it. Every receipt, I take money out at the dispensary. Like all those fees. I'm writing those off too. Like fuck that. I'm not going to the bank. Waste my time. I'm just boom. I'm getting because, dude. At the end of the year, you're gonna have to pay a lot of fuck money if you're doing. A, I have like six businesses. Like I'm running full time. So anything I can do to fucking go, help go that through out. the list. Uh, the dopest shop. We started that in December seventeenth, twenty twenty one. Um, and then I. Dope as is essentially a full fucking business with all these videos and all the stuff I do. Um, revenue, I, obviously, it's a business. And then Push Trees as a fucking full warehouse. And then we do the Adventures channel, which is my second. That's like, like I said, my second channel. It's just another job. Like, fuck, there's another video every week, another filming, another video, another oh, yeah. editing session. It's no joke either. It's for people so that think much. People that, for anyone that think, Doing content is easy. It's like go do something. That's nah, all dude. I can say. And Marty like, edits all that. It's a lot of shit, yeah. you know, dude. It's, it's so much. It's so. so I know much. when you're saying like another thing, it's like yeah, weekly, ah, weekly, every weekly. Week. Like yep. you can't miss a week. So it's like you gotta be, and that's the hardest part: just staying disciplined and staying consistent. Try to do it. Yeah, and then the podcast is a full functioning fucking business in itself. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and then dude, I just started another spot. On. I started another company. Uh, all our paperwork got done today. I, I got a new warehouse in Van Nuys. We got a new spot. And it's my homie. You guys remember the Dabber Box? You guys remember that brand Dabber Box? Mm -hmm. You used to have rosin presses, accessories. Yeah, we definitely do. Yeah, my homie Sam used to own that. He just sold it. And then while he was doing it, I always thought, man, I would love to do a company like this. I would do it a little different than you and try to do more heady and cheaper stuff too. But he sold it. So now I have no fucking remorse for going after that market. So I just started a new company with my homies. and. uh we just got our warehouse done. All of our stuff got done as of today. Pictures are getting done actually right now. That's where I was at before. I set my homie up to like take all the pictures of our rest of our inventory. And that's the re-up shop. That's the re-up. I just wanted Fire. it to be like, yo, like $5 that. tier, re-up, $10 tier, tray, fucking dad. It's just an online smoke shop. Mm -hmm. It's just a, 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 like a lane I saw that I could do better than anybody was doing. Not, not like a no, cocky like thing, it. a more of user-friendly like you don't have these on your site what the fuck 
for if smokers site, by smokers. Yeah, if I had a shop, I would definitely have these. I'm like, why don't you just have a shop? So now we have a warehouse, yeah. another warehouse for that. Um, I feel like I'm missing something, but yeah, we I have, think you went to at least six. I, I mean, so. bro, I, just, I think so, but I feel like I'm missing something. And then live podcast coming. So live podcasts are coming. Pretty yeah, cool, but man. It, yeah, we're, we're, like I said, we're gonna do the. Uh, the com the comedy circuit first, like the Laugh Factories and all that. La Brea, La Brea, La Brea bring your Club. Mm -hmm. you bring your HHC pins. You smoke it. For, I mean, motherfucking comedy show because you can. You huh? can, but I don't know if you could smoke in those places. That's where Bobby Lee started his comedy. You gotta, you could get yeah. away with a vape, yeah. maybe, maybe get away with. The I'll vape. just give the whole crowd vapes. That would be fucking awesome. I would. You I gotta would, do that. It's like under your seat. You check under your seat. Oprah. You get one. Yeah, you go with the Oprah move. Yeah. The first show. <laughs> if you guys look between your legs, everybody <laughs> gets sick. an go edible. Ahead and look under your seat. Yeah. So, um, what we were talking about earlier is uh the podcast, and you're like, let's wait. Mm -hmm. So basically, what happened is Marty's been working. Uh, dude, Marty has like same amount of jobs I do, right? Marty's like a videographer, so he did the Super Bowl commercials, all the T-Mobile ones. Marty filmed those, like the all those, and he did the Microsoft ones, like with all the celebrity bullshit. And he was like hitting me up, like, dude, Gwen Stefani's here. And Marty's just some high ass motherfucker. He's like, How am I here? And he's filming shit. So Marty has a a friend that has a huge production company. So he's like, Marty, you're fucking awesome. Hire him for everything. So he does the shoots, so he doesn't know what he's doing. So he'll text me the other day, like, dude, I was on a Super Bowl commercial. What the fuck? So to him, it's mind blown. I'm mind blown. I'm fucking getting high. He's just getting high. So it's that's why we're like, I think people relate to us because we're just normal ass fools. Like, yo, can you fucking believe what I just did? We're just as excited as other people are. Like, we're not, you know, what I mean? it's not like we're anything different. So he's been working this deal with these people. We finally got it done. We signed. And basically, we were supposed to start in September. We're gonna, they're going to take over production, but we're going to start in January. So like this. It's called Malcolm Media. So on the roster, basically, when we walk in, the shows they film. So our corner's right here. We're going to build our new set in January. And in the middle is a... Fuck. I feel so all about... Damn it. I feel so dumb right now. All about the smoke. Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson. Oh. oh. I feel so dumb. And then right... All the smoke. Or no way. I think all the smoke. All about this. I feel so fucking burnt right now. What is it? Either way, we'll figure it out. We, we got, got our, that one. We have our uh, Jamie, but we call him Cody behind the camera. There you go. Yeah. He'll you'll let me know. And then all the smoke, all, all the, the smoke. smoke. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's all the smoke. All the right? smoke podcast. Yeah, Matt Barnes and yeah. Steven. That's, yeah. That's, yeah, and then cool. next to him is fucking Tyson and Pop Oxen. Wow. So we walk. It, aren't aren't they with all the smoke? Yeah, all the right. smoke. Aren't they with Showtime? They are. They are. But Malcolm Media is our production. Everything back oh, in Showtime's. Who's like. This is our team. Are you so, a Showtime too? Then, if you is, no, so again, because yeah. that's a whole different deal. How does that work? So basically, they do all the production, they take over everything, they do our social media, they film. There's like an eight person team, bro. It is fucking insane. You and gotta they let us come all up with smoke. Like Fire. they all smoke day one. I'm bringing a pack and just like thank you guys. <laughs> Dump it like Santa Claus. Here you like, go. Here you go. Here you go. Fucking here take it. Yep. Because they're all gonna like the new show brought a pound of fucking weed. I love these guys. Like yeah, film good for us, please. They will. I'm, I'm just yeah, saying. Like, no, a, for sure. Pound of weed doesn't They'll hurt enjoy on working. the table. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Best the meeting, incentive. But during the meeting, the owner of the whole production was smoking a joint while we we're having a meeting. So oh. I felt so like this is where we need to be. This is perfect. That's fire, man. So yeah, we went there and like the, it's so it's our set, uh, Matt Barnes, Steven Jackson, Tyson set, and they break it down, move stuff. So we signed with them. They have all of our booking right now. They have all of our ads. They're running everything. Cause it was just me and Marty. Like trying to- Which is impressive oh, though. Fuck, you guys are killing so much. it. We had, we, a lot. we had a booking agent dude. He helped. You know, we, we did, we st we're still doing a lot of work and we had an ad agency dude, but they're all great people. It's just them. It's not just, hey, there's two high dudes that would love you on the show. Now it's, hey, we're Malcolm Media. This is our new show. This is who we're pitching. Like we have like a 15 person team behind the scenes that, that are doing everything now besides filming. So me and Marty are just thinking of who do we want? And it's crazy because I gave my wish list. They're like, all right. So, and the day later, like, so here's our managers. Here's their open dates. I'm like, are you fucking shitting me? No way different now like wow, it's not just bro. two fucking high dudes trying to talk now it's oh this is the kids on our roster our new show 
do you want to be on their fucking show? Yeah. And they decide Kevin Garnett's show. Um, so it's about to be sick as fuck on film day. You know what I mean? Hell I'll be the shortest yeah. motherfucker in the room, but it's about to be tight KG as KG is dope now. Nah, he he knows what's good, too. He, he's up he's in had sack Adam and shit. And as his first guest on the show. What is it? He just had Adam Sandler as his first Did guest. Did he? Oh, My favorite yeah. Because they, were in the, they just huge. did the movie. Um, Uncut Gems. Yeah, Uncut yeah, Gems. Un, yeah, what a great movie. <laughs> Dude, Kevin such Garnett a dope movie for it. I mean, like, he yeah. did. He did a good job, man. And Sandler, it's dope to see him in a role like that. I felt like it was the American Beauty counterpart. Like that was as epic as American Beauty was in the end. <laughs> I fucking that one shit of my was crazy. Movies. I love that fucking classic. Movie. Those are your, that's one of your top classic. movies right there, American Beauty. Oh uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was Forrest Gump. I think it's Truman Show now. Uh, Forrest Gump, Truman Show, American the Beauty. Truman Show is trippy. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Such a good one. Wow, you like interesting movies. That's no, an interesting those are deep lineup. Ones. I I ask that question a lot, and I you rarely get those answers. That's interesting. Those are the palette. epic ones, man. Mm -hmm. You ever seen Little Big Man? The Dustin Hoffman, it's like nineteen seventy one or some shit. I watched it when I was a kid with my mom. I I was watching my whole life. You should watch that shit whenever watch you have about. time. It's Dustin Hoffman playing a white person raised by Indians during the Indian Revolution, like the seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds. Colonel Custard and all that shit. It's fucking sick. You guys should watch it. It's oh, just as epic that. as Forrest Gump, bro. Done. This guy is just I'm into that. Tight. This guy's all into the movies. It's yeah. great, dude. I love movies. Yeah, you're sold. <laughs> you're loving that. I guarantee you. What's it called again? Little Big Man. Little Big Man. It's so sick. I talk. I tell everybody Dustin to watch it. Dustin Hoffman. It's an old one. He's That's like fucking funny. twenty. He looks so young, bro. But, I mean, you've 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 lived in L.A. for a long time now, like six um, years. Yeah. Heady food spots. Um, I don't eat meat. And cheese and shit. So I don't have any food spots anymore. All my food, food, food sucks. Cooked at home or what? Oh, yeah. If we cook at home, it's awesome. Big, yeah. Take it back. I love places. And I'm like, Monty's? I'll go there. Huh? Monty's? Good burger? I don't like Monty's. Okay. I try not to eat um, like the soy shit. Mm -hmm. I have been like the past two months, but I've also felt sick for like a month. So it kind of plays to it, I think. Yeah, that's Place. where it gets tricky, man. Like, yeah. if you're gonna do no me, I've done, I've done periods of it like a year and stuff like that, and t good times where it's like you're cooking, preparing <laughs> things, you know, going, getting fresh, you know, fruits, vegetables, whatever. Yeah. And then there's other times where you're just like on the move. That was the worst times. Eating a lot of bread. Oh, like, bro, that's where fucking I'm at just right carving now. up. Like, I can't. That's why I just had to start <sighs> introducing meat again because it was like I did the raw vegan shit for like a month. It was the best. I never felt better in my life. And then, that's the thing too. Oh, it was, it was like bomb. energy is like sustainable. Oh, it's plentiful. Oh, it's it was so bomb. I felt like a fucking you don't burn. crash. Yeah, but but my my fiance just had jaw surgery and shit. So since then I'm like, dude, I'm so fucking busy. I'm just eating bullshit. You know, checking stuff, going doing work stuff. So I robbing and shit was not workable when I don't have my other half helping me do shit. So. Yeah, I feel like shit. But there's a place you guys should try. It's called Pura Vida. Pura Vida. P-U-R-A. Santa Monica. It's Hash House is the bougiest bitch in the world. He eats the, the bougiest shit I've ever seen. And he loved it. It's Italian, vegan Italian shit. It's so fucking bomb. I, everyone that I know that's not vegan fucks with it. I bring them there. This place called Crossroads. That's pretty good. It's like high-end vegan food. Dude, so going back to the story initially, um, you know, you said you're struggling mm -hmm. and you were doing the, you know, doing merch and stuff like that. Where did, where did it really go from there? Like, what was your like first big break to where you were like, you know, feeling like uh, everything's going to be good. Everything's like heading in the right direction. Dude, quarantine. During quarantine. Yeah. Um, How did it go for you? Because I felt like, like we had seen you in that period, right? And then I kind of lost it. And then like, boom, I started seeing a lot of like more heavy online presence. So I felt like, it usually comes down to like, I don't know, you meet someone. Okay, so this is what happened. I was working with this dude for like a year. He was awesome. Filming. Fucking weirdo. In the end. Like, I could not work with somebody like that. I stopped working with him. A month later, what Marty. What do you mean? Marty, he's just he's fucking weird. He's, a, he's in, the, he's in the, the movie industry. This is not the fucking movie, bro. Calm down. It's a YouTube. Chill the fuck out like you're not my yeah. boss. So don't tell me to do this shit. It's not going to fly. Oh, like, doing little that? shit. Like, yo, I know it's production. Shut the fuck up. Also, <laughs> like, calm down. I didn't say you're tilt. I said, go up and down, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Sorry, I didn't say tilt. 
like just stupid shit. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Anyway, got to a breaking point. It got, it got all weird. Done. As soon as I was done with him, like three months later, Marty hits me up randomly. Uh, Cause I was during a story time, like, yo, I'd love to do a podcast. And then Marty's back story, he does all the shit for like Rogan, Theo Vaughn, uh, Adam Carolla, um, Brandon Schaub, like wow. all, the, all the big, all the big ones, right? Fighter and the Kid was Marty. Marty's the behind the scenes guy of that. And um, Marty had like a music career. Marty's like a musician. So he came out here to work with like Dr. Dre and shit. And he was like the DJ Ski. Marty's like a rapper. He just put out his own music. Marty's fucking awesome. He's a hard ass worker, dude. Like one of the hardest working dudes I know. Probably the hardest working person I know. And he hit me. I was like, yo, I saw you want to do a podcast. I look at his page. I go, you work and my, what the fuck? And I'm looking like media management. Boom, boom, boom. Like, are you shitting me? I had to make sure like, you're hitting me up. Okay. And I met up with him. He was fucking awesome. And um, we started, he started editing all my shit. I was just editing chop, chop, chop. And Marty's a master fucking editor. That's when my shit started taking off. He's like, yo, you should do some like a promo picture. I'm like, what? That's what happened. Like out of nowhere, when I started, you're like, I just saw it just out of nowhere one day. That's why. Because Marty started editing my shit. That's really what happened. And he was then like also helping you produce as well, saying, you know, I guess saying, hey, dudes, you should do this. You should do that. I like, yeah, he's like, well, I feel like when you website. get that symbiotic flow, like mm -hmm. whether it's with like producer and artist or however it works out, but it's that well, back and forth when well, the magic he's happens. Out all these huge arenas for these guys. Like he's doing the target marketing. He's calling the the venues. Like, yo, Rogan wants to be here on this time. Blah blah blah. How many seats? How many yeah. So what? He his does position all that. for that. Like he's, he's just quit everything. He let wow. every fucking client go. Wow. Since podcast, he, yeah. What he was really he? But what was his like media management, uh, editing, tour management? Marty's never been on the road though. He was like, hey guys, I sold your shit out. Uh, you guys didn't invite me to dinner? No, damn. That's how I feel. Marty's never said that. I'm like, yo, you never chill. I'm like, you've never hung out with these motherfuckers. It just, it made me like, we should do our own. Like that's, he's like, I think I should do my own shit. Like you need to, cause you've been doing too much work. I'm not talking bad about that. I'm just right. the way I am. Like if someone's working with me, like we've never hung out personable. together. Yeah. What the fuck? We're supposed to be like friends too. That's when I'm like, yo, you sold out the show for me. Thanks. Come to dinner. Or like, that's how I felt like, no, Marty, we're going to make it different. So I'm not saying anything bad about that. He never said that. When he was telling me stories, I would ask, like, you've never chilled with these guys? Like, I've been to a show. Like, that's it? Ah, like, that's why we're friends. Like, me and you are different. And he started uh, letting all the clients go slowly. Like, we just started getting too busy. And as soon as we got a new sponsor, it's like, I think I can let this client go. Because it was eating up our day. And he does everything. Every edit, every upload, every fucking thing. Um, I was just like yeah. destiny then. A hundred percent. You want to hear something crazier? Go. I'm almost thinking in my head, we should have fucking invited Marty. Marty's a fucking <laughs> man, dude. We should have. You should hear we Marty's stories, bro. We're going to run bro. back and invite Marty. You hear Marty's yeah. stories, bro. Let's get high as shit crazy. and have Marty on. The backstory of how Marty got to where he was. And uh, we're doing an episode where my mom came on because everyone wants to, because I've done so many stories. Mom's I a fucking psychopath. One. And uh, <laughs> she's on the story. I'm uh, almost a fifth deep. I was just got shit faced, and I remember holding the bottle, the and we're talking. Fun. Yeah, she was. She's on much. My mom eats mushrooms and shit now, but she used to be psychotically strict, and now she's all fucked up and shit. I'm sending her this. It's crazy. <laughs> we're talking, and Marty goes, "You know when I met you, so and so." I didn't know. One of my vlogs from 2014, the same week he moved here, he just happened to be. He was Dr. Dre's son. Like they're like doing all this stuff together. He's like, "Yo, you want to go to a weed party?" And it was the weed party I went to, my friend threw. The friend that's filming the fucking stuff right now in my warehouse, that guy threw a party. And during the episode, I used to do these little skits, dumb shit, like, yo, disappear, something dumb. It was, it was fun skits, robot chicken. That's what I used to call my shits. Robot chicken with weed in it. And then I had a thing like, yo, man, can you throw this med tainer? Remember med tainers or grinders? Can you throw this med tainer? I, I made it look like I threw it. And I fucking... Superman down and caught it at this party. It was like on a hill. It was Marty. I asked to throw the shit. He's in the fucking video. I didn't even know. Oh my a year God. and twenty wow. minutes. A year and Rippy. two months in. I'm like, what do you mean we met? He never mentioned the shit. I go back in the video and there's fucking Marty, Buffalo Bills hat, fucking. 
Big Cheek Marty had no idea, dude. It was meant to fucking be that. Like, this dude, I happened to have him film some shit for me real quick. I'm like, yo, can you hold the camera and throw this thing? And then he, my, like, when he brought it, I'm like, what are you fucking talking about? I didn't even know, man. Like, it was meant to be that wow. we were supposed to work together. Like, it was eight years later we met. Like, what the fuck are the odds? It's the craziest shit ever. Crazy. Uh, uh, when you like to film and stuff, you, you usually smoke before the podcast and then after. I'm smoking all the time. All the time, right? Yeah. yeah. Just wondering like, if we'll there's smoke a routine. Like, it, it, it's never like I'm too high. Yeah. No. It's always more of like. <laughs> Those days are unfortunately over. <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it back. The, uh, I completely spaced. I did the Chevy Woods, the rapper the other day. And during I went. Oh, and then Marty talked. And I went, thank God. I forgot my word. I didn't know what the next <laughs> word I was going to say was. And then I realized I switched up the weed that day. I tried some runts, a t- uh, runts crossed with some other shit. I'm like, oh, and it hit me differently. And I got like a little head high and spaced out. And that's why I smoke fucking OG all the time. I just want to be fucked up, but be able to think. I, I guess we would think it's the opposite effect, but I just like being completely shit faced. Well, everyone's because, bodies are different and like yeah. that reacts with you perfectly for what your outcome needs to be mm-hmm. yeah yeah i feel like that was skittles you know oh or, really yeah i'll smoke a skittles or a papaya and if we're talking hash but skittles for flour or any type of z cross period and i feel like i get very um <clears throat> psychoactive cannabinoids i feel like i feel like they have the terpene content so high that you start to think differently it kind of ins- it's just like inspiring almost i gotta be honest dude maybe that's what was going on i started like my brain started working different it's not like i forgot i was i spaced out for like two you seconds think about other like, shit. yeah yeah bro you're on fucking camera interview motherfucker what are you doing with part of taylor gang <laughs> I'm like, come yeah. on bro what are you doing it was like a two second like blip in my head what's good what's coming up man what do you yeah. i mean new production that's you feel like you're like stepping up into the big leagues now oh yeah dude we walked in and there was like even though you're already oof, it's, you it's know, just it's, me and marty right now but that's so now yeah. you're like you're like man this oh, is yeah, a team. The building, there's like 40 fucking people on phones and like running around like an office and they all knew our names like they were ready for a like this is fucking weird that's awesome like i do not feel like an adult and you motherfuckers are over here treating me like an adult this is different so you walk, I'm like, pick a room. I'm like, or do you want to go in the back? I'm like, I want to be by a Tyson set. Awesome. I would like to be in that room. And they're like, perfect. Fuck, it's a smoking section anyway. I'm like, perfect. Because you've seen our show. Like, that's why we're here. And um, the production, like, when I was walking back, seeing people putting lenses back in the cage, like, running around. Hey, what's up, man? Nice, nice to meet you. Oh, oh. carrying cables. Oh, this is the social media guy. This is the guy that does uploads. This is the email person. I'm like, what the fuck? That's all just me and Marty. That's when I'm like, is different because now we have camera operators they can move it's not just like we're set because marty's on camera like we right. have somebody to change the shit camera dies that can't angle's gone until he gets up and fucking does it so having these people is way different yeah i felt like we're a real dude and a whole back end team mm-hmm. that's crucial yeah we haven't, they haven't started social media yet but they've started ads and uh booking yeah Fire. they're great dude they're on top of it it's crazy like they're a real production company though that's why and they just want you to be you that's it they just want you know like, we don't saying? want you to worry about anything We're walking in and talking oh i thank you like have everything ready spot. like oh my god this is crazy you like, got a parking spot with, yeah they're like yo well, there's a parking lot. i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> It's just crazy. It's as dope as Yolana. You're like, oh, oh that's me, no. man. <laughs> Motherfucker walk by, see that, just, no, hell no. Dude, it's pretty, it's secluded. It's secluded enough, but people are crazy sometimes. Mm-hmm. People will like wait for hours. Anything like, like that? Yeah. But it's like, dude, you're cool. Did you think of this through? <laughs> Did you think it through? <laughs> Like, I'd be like, yo, thanks for stalking me for a minute, bro. I love you. <laughs> they told me that someone was stalking Mike Tyson out there for weeks. Really? Yeah, but like as a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the production company is hella low key, but someone spot, must have spotted him walking in one day. So it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's very low key. I mean, he's fucking the most famous boxer ever. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different thing for him. Yeah, look at also look what happened on the shit, airplane bro. and shit. Like, yo, yeah. he got to like be careful, right? Like, I like, got it. Well, because Yo. he does a podcast, oh. people think he's approachable. Before he's he was an approachable, right? Because you're like, oh, no, that's that guy that knocks me. But now you hear him talking and you laugh with him and you think, mm-hmm. oh, this guy's approachable. I'm going to say something yeah. to him or I'm going to heckle him. Yeah. 
And it's like, yo, bro, no, that is the same guy that just knocked out all those. Like, he is the same guy. Yeah. You know? yeah like, <laughs> like, he physically could still do it, bro. Mm-hmm. He might be happy smiling, smoking joints now, but that guy got it. He was saying some stupid shit. And he was like, fucking peasants. And the next clip was him getting punched in the fucking forehead. Hey. <laughs> Hada. That was hilarious. Great clip, was dude. Classic. Yeah. You're like, yep, Tyson with the right. <laughs> yeah. Scary. It's good to see him back out there. Oh, man. Scary shit. Well, it's good to, it's definitely good to live in the Mecca of fire cannabis, bro. You know, oh, bro. jeez, to be able to do what you do and, and be able to smoke, you know, have access to fire all the time and be able to live here in, you know, the kind of the Mecca, really. By far. Yeah. Places might be fun and cooler, but you're not going to have this. It's not the same. Yeah, this is like so accepted. It's and it's boring. not like I have to worry. I'm like, oh, it's a nut jar. I'm not saying other states are like that. The places I've been in other states, I'm like, yeah, can I see it first? Yeah. Can I see what you're smoking first? <laughs> or like, just say, okay, to rip this bong? Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Or you start yeah. hitting it and they're like, no, it's shake, bro. It's been shake. Oh. Yeah, we smoke shake over here. Oh, I've had so many people like, no, it's fucking roaches. I'm like, they're making it like a little smorgage board oh, of fucking Lord. roaches. That's cool, but I guess I'm just too fucking bougie, I guess. Yeah, you get to a point where you're done smoking roaches. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'd yeah, rather yeah. give you some weed rather than you smoke roaches. It's too much good weed. There's too much good weed out here accessible to be smoking to be roaches, smoking for okay. sure. There's almost too much bad weed out here, too, to be smoking roaches. Like, there's geez. so much weed out. <laughs> it's never, I don't care what anybody says, there's not a shortage. It's no. just- but Hell no. to you, dude. <laughs> it's too much. Yeah. People just don't want to sell it to you. It's, it's a true That's statement, awesome. man. I remember this time where I was selling weed. I'm like, nobody wants, like, there was a drought of people buying weed for like four months. I remember I looked at my cabinet with so many fire ass fucking top shelf packs. And I was so mad that I was like, how can I not get rid of this fire ass weed? There's got to be a way. <laughs> There's, this is impossible. I was so upset for like months. And it picked up, but still. Like there's weed out there. Mm. Your neighbors probably got it. I'm not saying go ask them, but everyone smokes weed, man. You'd be shocked. Yeah, that's that's a shocked. fact. Yeah, yeah. Go to a grow event, and uh, you can usually pick out the guys who are making moves and doing it. You know. Yeah. yeah. Any events you've been to lately? Any? Uh, not really. Dude. I did yeah. the secret sesh recently. That looked cool, man. Yeah, but it's different now. Um, events are the same. You got to like, yo, can I buy this weed? Yeah, here's your ticket. Go to the distribution booth. What? This is, wait another line? Fuck. It's weird, dude. You can't have like packs out. It's not the same. It's just, it's great for what it is. It's the best it could be for the laws that we have. (laughs) But it's not the same. And you guys said you went to an event recently and you said it felt like 215. Yeah, PuffCon. Well, not in that sense though. No, not in just that the vibe. sense. They weren't selling. They weren't selling no, no, weed, no. no. Just merch. But the vibe like of like everyone having a jar on them and showing what they've yeah. been working on and people, you know, kind of like, like here, take a couple nugs of this. I'll take a couple mm-hmm. nugs of that. You know, tell me what you think of that Fino. I'm working on this. And you would, you saw a lot of exchanges of knowledge and Finos and strength, you know, where, where we used to have that before, you know, but yeah, the getting a ticket that was at Emerald Cup too. And then you're, you wait a 30 minute line to look at the weed and then pick it out. And then you wait another 45 minute line to get your jar and hope it's the same thing you just looked at. <sighs> yeah, it's tough. But California, it's like almost every state does that. They like overcompensate on the laws and then slowly draw back the stuff that doesn't make sense, but it takes forever. And ever all the, the people that pay are the smokers. Yes. You can't get legal hash rosin fucking like perfect. It's dried. It has to be like quarantine, 14 days. Like, dude, fuck. It's going to be all like that dry cake on the top or a puck. Hate it. I fucking hate it. I always smoke black market hatch forever. I don't give a fuck. Until this fool goes illegal. And then we'll fucking see what's going on. But, <laughs> dude, come on. Yeah, big shout out Hash House. Always mm-hmm. doing it right. His fresh press, those like, oh, man. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I've been a lot of hash lately, man. I'll go through the phase. I know it. I'll go back to weed in like a couple weeks. I already feel it. Shit. Any last shout outs, man? Any last things? Before we wrap it up. I feel like we fucking talked about a lot today. We fucking yeah. went through it. Yeah, no, dude. Uh, just the dopeshop.com is like the biggest thing we're doing right now. It's like 
where most of my time is going. Fucking amazing. Just because it's a, something you smoke. Like, we have to be fucking on top of this. Mm -hmm. Shirts, it's great. Y'all selling a new shirt. Oh, man, it was cracked. The print was cracked. Sorry, manufacturer gave you a new shirt. Yo, your cart made me throw up. Or I don't know. Like, this is serious. We never had that happen. But we have to be on top of these mm -hmm. things so much more. And since we can actually sell all this stuff, it's like, it's fun. Like, mate, we had... Every single thing you, you see was like 75 text messages through all of us. Like, yo, nope, change it. What, can you make this better? Like, it's all, I have all the text from every item. Like, screenshots, this, that. Do you want this on there? Do you want that? Like, we really go through every fucking detail with every single thing just to make sure it's, it's my fucking, literally my fucking face on it. I have to make sure it's fine. Like, I, I, I don't want you being upset, looking at my face on a package, smiling at you like a dickhead. You know what I mean? So yeah, the dopeshop.com, pushtrees.com, uh, Dope as Usual podcast. We, every Monday, we, we post every Monday, three o'clock. We have a lot of guests lined up, like a lot of guests lined up. Man. Is it the list getting crazy with the- Yes. With the- Fuck. It's situation. way different what you see with, with like, hey, we're with this agency. We like your person on the podcast. Like, wow. They didn't respond to us. <laughs> they didn't respond to me <laughs> like, at all. So that's getting that's dope though, man. Big gas coming. Yeah, man. Jeez. Yeah. Just and it's it's more of like like I said, season three, I'll start dipping into the people I want. Cause some people I want to meet and talk to are not necessarily the motherfuckers that people are like think yo, I really want to listen to this guy. I'm like, dude, that's me. That's my childhood shit. I gotta talk to this motherfucker. Yeah. You know, it's stuff like yeah. that. That's like I'll start being able to do more of that. Yeah, I just give them a list now and they just run with it and give us back like dates. Like this fucking insane, dude. Wow. Yeah. So Fire. yeah, it really helps. It it helps. And it's the same fucking percentage. We were already paying our booking agent. So nothing changed. Like literally nothing wow. at all. And you got a set in production. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to, that that's a that's different separate. cost, but like yeah. please charge yeah. us. Meanwhile, you don't <laughs> yeah. have to think about it anymore. Thank you so much. They do a great, I mean, you see Hotbox, you see the fucking way it looks. Fire. It's the same motherfuckers filming our shit. Mm -hmm. Like same dude making the reels and posting and the looks and the design. Like there's a guy for every, or a girl for every position. And yeah, it's, it's fun. Next year is, the beginning of next year is going to be super fucking just hectic. Like positively hectic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any yeah, in person, more in-person meetups you're going to do? Yes, up? October 30th, I'll be in New York, Manhattan. Um, we actually might have to change the location, but we will be at secret sesh. They're going to have a, just, just hang out. We'll have like a booth, but the location for the meet and greet might have to change, but it's going to be in New York, October 30th. And then I believe November 10th is Miami. And then right around the same time, we're picking the date for Texas. It's just, Texas is fucking massive. We're trying to pick the best location for people to not have to drive forever. because. This past weekend, people are like, I drove seven hours. Like, fuck. I'll help yeah. you guys out. Let me centralize this a little bit. You know, because Texas is fucking massive. So that's what we're trying to do. And I think it's going to end it because everyone else in this pot in this company has fucking children. And that's, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas. I am not asking them to come out with me to a meet and greet so we can, you know what I mean? Like during yeah. the fucking holidays. So we're trying to get it done before that so we can all like, they can do their thing. Yeah. Um, I don't have children. I don't have kids. So. I'll do it any fucking time. I don't give a shit, but they do. So that's where we're trying to like dial it in before the holidays start. So Absolutely. yeah, New York, Miami, and Texas. And I've never been to any of these places. So I mean, New so, York, I just went, but Chicago. Have you ever been to Miami? Day, no. You're going to love it. Yeah. You're going to love it. All I know about Miami is fucking Home Alone too, when they're getting fucking rained in and nah, fucking Florida. It'll be good. It's all I know good. about Miami. Too. Some jet skis, some the saunas, water, hey, the you know, beach, man. Get up get in the, the spa. The you ocean know. just laps in, man. No crazy waves bussing in like the out here, man. The waves you can get in the water. In. It's warm. I'll fuck oh, with the water, man. Dude. You will in Miami. Oh, man. We'll see. Man. Good weed, fire weed. Shout oh, yeah. out Wynwood. I mean, great area, great dope, like kind of artsy Arts spot fishery. where. In Miami? Yeah, yeah. you'll love it, man. Yeah, I'm Great excited. Great food, too. Phenomenal food. Yeah, I'm excited, dude. I mean, I've never been to these places, so. It'll be good. The culture is dope down there. For sure. Yeah, like going to Chicago was completely different. I bet. It's clean. It was clean LA. At the downtown, there was not one piece of trash. It was fucking weird, actually. I liked it. I'll be back. It was fun. 
But yeah, dude, uh, that 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 would end the tour. That's it. Then we're Fire. done, and I hate flying, so like I'm just trying to get off the plane, have fun, worry about the flight. I'm home. Like I just can't wait. I'm excited, not for the flights. Other than that, I'm good. Yeah, yeah I have to get yeah. a tour bus here soon. I would f- much rather drive. I would love to do that. That Wait, would. I think it was like DJ Khaled. He wouldn't fly for the longest time. He, no. he literally wouldn't fly. He's Paris like, won't turn take boats, bro, to England to to the UK to do shows. He will not get on a plane either. So I take a boat. It's gonna take a week and a half, but I'll be there. Like, fuck, fucking that shit. boat. A week and a half. Should I film I that excursion, huh? <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, we're going by boat. I guess it's kind of like I mean, depending on which Dude, that boat, would make if it's me like sicker. Connor McGregor's. You know what I'm saying? If it's like a yacht, that's that's chilling. But <sighs> I'd rather fly. I'm afraid of the water more okay. than the airplane. Me too. Shoot, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's no I, sharks in the air. I say least. that, but I threw up for like two days straight when I went on my first cruise because like yeah. how oh, rolling it gets. That sucks. And I took a couple hits of a vape pen, a hash pen, and I thought, oh, shit. things. What? I'm starting to sweat. And then I just went from sweating to like running back to the room. Yeah, yeah, so. I don't know if the boat would work. Yeah. I honestly would have threw up. <laughs> Dude, those are side. rough waters too going through. It can't be smooth. From US to Europe. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Nah. The dopest shop, bro. Get on there. Shit. Try try some of this yes. stuff. We we almost ate most of this gummy right here. That'd Great taste. Yeah, yeah I'm good. I, I had the piece. I'll I smash could, it. I could feel it a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The That'd dopa shop, dopa jola. Thank you guys so much for having me. Bless bro, thank nah, you. Thank man. you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank Chopping you game, man. Uh, episode 70, first smoke of the day. Peace. Yo, welcome to the Diamond Mine, the diamondmine.la, California source for boutique genetics, powered by yours truly, Blackleaf. And you know what that means? That means I'm bringing my best genetics into this. I'm bringing stuff I've been hiding, harboring away, stuff I haven't wanted to let out. We're bringing all that into the diamondmine.la, and we're going to offer that to California. Go on our website, hit the newsletter and see if you can rock with us. Get on board with some of our genetics and change your garden. The diamondmine.la powered by Blackleaf.